There does not exist an environment so secure that an advanced actor cannot compromise through the application of time, resources, and motivation. Hi team, I'm TJ Benastic, and I'm a product manager with Google Distributed Cloud. Today's presentation is on our zero trust strategy. Our agenda will start with defining what is zero trust and what it's not. We'll move into exploring Google's zero trust journey so you can leverage our experience to expedite your time to value. We'll delve into exploring the zero trust approach, differentiating between the shared responsibility model, things that we as a CSP do share with you and things that you do on the customer side of the equation. We'll explore the GDC zero trust framework and close with a call to action. What is zero trust? No implicit trust is key because the modern infrastructure no longer dictates the perimeter as our security boundary. Authentication and authorization are discrete functions which must be performed on a session or workload basis. We're here to protect resources and not network segments. And what that means is the perimeter alone is not where we define our controls and trust. It's around the enterprise, the workloads, and the data that we are securing. It's very important to define what zero trust is not. This is important because when you go to RSA or the big security conferences, every vendor will tell you that their product is zero trust. And they're not wrong. Zero trust is more of a mindset and a framework for a journey to securing your workloads. We need to start with defining the fact that it's not literal. If we literally wanted to zero trust no one, we would disable the keyboard, the mouse, uh, the ethernet jack, and our business wouldn't function because it's not a practical strategy. So this is not literal, it's grounded in practical approaches. It's not an adjective. So there is not a day to where our security leadership walks into the room and says, we did it guys, we're zero trusted. You get a zero trust t-shirt and you get a zero trust t-shirt. Great job team, we did it. On to the next bigger and better thing. It is an approach and not a milestone. So it's a continual journey and with cloud, things evolve dynamically, quickly. So we continually need to secure our models and assume breach while we do it. It's not for sale. Uh, there is not a singular zero trust product that you can put over any type of workload or data and secure it. It's more so a collection of a security architecture of techniques and approaches that is tailored to each workload's needs. And it's not instant. So we don't wanna boil the ocean. This isn't a practical approach. We don't wanna discard proven tools and methodologies. Um, keep what you have, apply them in new ways with new mindsets. Google Zero Trust journey started in 2009 with Operation Aurora. This was a series of cyber attacks against the US defense industrial base. An advanced actor was targeting the United States government and rather than hit the harder walls of their perimeter, they went after the defense industrial base, multiple commercial tech companies. This really opened up our eyes at Google uh, and we realized that uh, we needed to do things differently. The industry as well caught on to this. In 2010, John Kinderwack and a team from Forrester drafted the first Zero Trust white paper, which is the foundation of the modern Zero Trust type approaches that we see today. In 2015, Google implements Zero Trust uh, controls internally. It was so effective that a year later, we got rid of our virtual private networks and uh, moved into a 100% multi-factor uh, based approach. Uh, as time goes on, we're nearly a decade into that journey. In 2019, we decided we wanted to share these lessons and productized it in Beyond Corp Enterprise, which was the industry's first uh, zero trust uh, enterprise offering to help customers secure their workloads with these new practices and principles. In 2021, the Biden administration released the Cyber Executive Order 14028, Google attends a cybersecurity meeting at the White House, and in 2022, Google makes a cyber commitment and pledge to provide training to 100,000 Americans and invest $10 billion to advance the field of cybersecurity. Google also acquires Mandiant to bolster our portfolio of security services, um, especially when it comes to uh, advanced actors and securing air gap clouds. 
The traditional model of zero trust was described by John Kinderwack and the Forrester team. They compared it to an M&M that has a hard shell and a gooey center to where if the threat is able to breach your firewalls and your network controls, once they're inside, they're able to move laterally. Uh, the blast is amplified. They're going after that gooey center. And generally, it's easier to take your data and go outbound than it is to breach inbound. So really needed to move away from that model and start to understand how to secure the data um, and uh, limit that implicit trust boundary. The modern threat landscape is based in a concept that um, your controls are dictated by your industry, your organization, and your regulatory requirements. And so threat actors will target various uh, organizations within a vertical or an industry sector. And so your business or organization being more secure with respective controls will elevate your defense against the threat. In this image, you can see another concept of microservices. Folks will often get lost in the fact that zero trust is not only initial access, it's what happens while your data is in motion and while your workloads are conducting their functions and processing your data. And so what are the microservices, uh, the service accounts, the interactions between your front end and your back end and your databases? And so uh, this strategy is very well captured and amplified in Kubernetes. Uh, and that's one of the uh, core principles in how we defend our workloads is segmenting um, each enclave or position of a workload and defending it accordingly. The zero trust approach is grounded in secure access. And so no implicit trust is the key takeaway there. We look to secure data throughout its life cycle with session-based authentication and authorization. Very important to assume breach, assume compromise, and to limit the blast radius of an attack. Uh, that could be an external threat, that could be a trusted insider through willful intent or negligence. We're working to secure applications, so a comprehensive app framework to defend the resources and not the network segments. Grounding all of it is visibility and control. You can have the strongest zero trust architecture, but if you don't have a security operations team, 24 seven eyes to glass responding to threats, you can't be effective. So security operations is very key to this framework. We developed our framework based in several industry standards of best practice. The first is NIST SP 80207, which is the zero trust architecture. We also built upon the zero trust maturity model from uh, SISA, uh, also was grounded in TIC 3.0 in the Department of Defense zero trust framework. And so bringing those together, the common patterns are a set of pillars and frameworks. And we'll dive into those a little bit deeper. The key here is we're looking to advance from those traditional models to advance and optimal levels of protection for your workloads in air gap clouds. You want to reduce the surfaces, enforce least privilege, put in contextually aware policies and controls, adapt that dynamically and ensure session-based control. We reinforce these pillars with visibility and analytics from Mandiant and our security operations team through automation and orchestration. Why? Because machines are faster than humans and we need that to stay ahead of the threat at scale. And governance, the regulatory framework that defines uh, what we do, why we do it, and how well we do it. The takeaway here is when we're operating in something such as an air gap cloud, that alone is not a sufficient defense against attacks. The Stuxnet attack is an historical example of an air gap cloud uh, that was compromised uh, due to supply chain vulnerabilities. So very important that even in defending an air gap, Obviously, the threats are different, but we need to apply zero trust models to ensure that we uh, limit that blast radius. Google Distributed Cloud is based on three pillars of sovereignty. The first is data sovereignty. And so the idea is you're able to run our cloud uh, in an enterprise grade scale, uh, starting with three racks and expanding out to that full data center scale. You control the hardware that is sovereignty in your locations. We lean into software sovereignty, and this means open models, transparency, avoiding vendor lock-in to ensure that you know what's going on with these technologies and workloads. And if you decide to move them, you're able to do that with flexibility. Third pillar is operational sovereignty. This is the key takeaway of this product, and this is why we delivered Google Distributed Cloud AirGap. So in this model, 
you operate this cloud in a box on your facilities and premises. You can do it with your personnel or a managed Google uh, team, and you don't require any connection to Google or the internet at any time. The shared responsibility model is very important to grasp for our zero trust story. And this is a learning with a lot of experience and engagements with different customers. We have several personas. The infrastructure operator is operating our cloud. The application operator is more so on the customer side in the workload space. So zero trust controls and capabilities are applied in various areas from the administrative plane into the user workloads. There is a shared responsibility model. That means we, Google, as a cloud service provider, are responsible to defend the infrastructure. There's certain controls that we'll share and certain controls, such as customer workloads, that we aren't able to see that the customer has a responsibility to defend. Google Distributed Cloud breaks out these zero trust pillars. And we start with identity to focus on uh, securely managing that identity, their credentials, and the level of access that they have in the cloud. We use visibility and analytics to look at continuous monitoring for threat detection and incident response in your environment. That is your security operations center team. These are the proven professionals that will be eyes to glass 24 by seven, keeping your most sensitive of data secure. Network and environment is enforcing access controls in dynamic and often untrusted segments of the network. This includes encryption and various uh, uh, micro and macro segmentation techniques. Data centric protection is very key. Uh, this involves things like data classification, information rights management, encryption, and of course, access control. Devices are very important in our cloud. So we have the terminals that administrators use. We have physical and virtual servers. We have jump hosts, crash carts, um, various equipment that administrators will use. And we secure all those respectively. In the customer plane, uh, you also have uh, pieces of infrastructure or you may extend that into an environment where you need to control your devices as well. So very important to defend posture, policy and compliance of any device that's accessing the environment. We don't want a rogue device to slip in and circumvent our controls. Automation and orchestration, because machines respond faster than humans, we need that to defend our clouds at scale. In the core of our defense, which is applications and workloads, every workload will be protected differently and uniquely. If we have 75 zero trust controls, they don't apply to every workload. So the way that I would defend a generative AI large language model is different than I virtual machine workload or a Kubernetes based resource. And we need to ensure that the right controls are delivered in the right places. Our zero trust strategy has numerous levels of technology that we apply as we start to expand out these pillars. Uh, you'll start to see our various controls for RBAC, ABAC, uh, federated identity providers, two person integrity, inventory, um, a bill of materials for trusted hardware and software, integrity checks on software, vulnerability and patch management, uh, active defense with endpoint detection and response, uh, with security information event management, uh, working into the automation in Kubernetes, in cloud security posture management, uh, incident and case routing, or uh, moving into artificial intelligence, things such as Vertex AI and using that to build machine learning and artificial intelligence workloads to help you better secure your cloud. Visibility and monitoring, uh, making sure your workloads are available and performant, um, using different security scanning techniques to get full visibility into your environment and your cloud. GDC, we also have several best practices, and these are uh, taken from Google's experience in the space. They are lessons learned from our various customers and things that we've applied in practice. Identity and access control is key. 100% uh, implementation of multi-factor authentication. Granular access controls to ensure unauthorized access is, is not successful. Uh, Time-bound access, two-party authentication, a lot of different things that we apply in there. Audit logging is very key. If you are not logging when you're attacked, you won't have evidence that you've been attacked and it'll be incredibly hard to investigate that. We saw that during the SolarWinds compromise. So, in our administrative plane, we stand behind the event model for uh, maturity management, and that is M2131 directive. And we also provide the tools for you to collect that level of logging in your customer workloads. 
Encryption uh, moves from customer managed keys, hardware security modules, centralized certificate authority, encryption, secure boot, and integrity. Security monitoring is our 24 by 7 uh, professionals. Uh, our Mandiant team defends our Google uh, operated clouds. They also provide services if you want to do that in a partner model or within your customer workloads. Security and hardware supply chain, um, mitigating the vulnerabilities in the supply chain is, is very key to success. Uh, a lot of different ways that we do that. We end with a call to action. The first is to contact your Google team. Tell them that you're interested in Google Distributed Cloud Airgap, and we'd love to work with you. Request a security engagement. We generally start with the Google Distributed Cloud Security Overview, teach you about what our product is and how we defend it. We then go into our zero trust strategy to start to look at what your workloads are. What do you care about and how can we defend it? We can move into more advanced things like threat modeling, or even take it further with our Mandiant team to explore uh, scenarios such as insider threat, uh, critical workloads, uh, custom configurations, and so on and so forth. You also want to learn more. So download our Google Distributed Cloud Zero Trust white paper. This is merely an introduction to what we've published in that white paper. That serves as the implementation guide. So when you want to know the how of building Zero Trust workloads, we have the guide that shows you all of our different controls, how they map to regulatory frameworks, and the documentation and references for you to uh, validate that your administrative plane is secure or to apply these within your customer control workloads. Thanks, team.